morning. Another day, another rare world test. Today, we're doing it on the Google Pixel 7a, the new affordable A-series Pixel phone from Google. And as per the usual, we will test it out throughout the day, all while we explore a little bit. But first things first. Coffee, check, and welcome to Lion's Milk. Now, this is a coffee shop that has actually been here for a very long time, and it's only a few blocks from my house. But for the longest time, it was kind of a takeout only spot, and I, being someone who likes to sit with my latte and maybe work a little bit or write or whatever, I just, uh, over time, kind of forgot about it because of that. It wasn't until this past March that I rediscovered it when I was actually looking for a place to host my birthday party. And it turns out the new owners actually renovated the space and added a much needed back area with a lot more seating, as well as an outdoor area in the front, thanks to COVID allowing every restaurant here to create an outdoor space on the street. And subsequently the city allowed that to become permanent. It's actually a much better place to come hang at. Now also the new owners from Turkey updated the menu with some great Turkish food, like this Boruk, Boruk, Boruk. One of the owners taught me how to say it and I, I definitely butchering it, but it's something like that. Regardless though, it is a pastry made with filo dough and filled with either meat, spinach, cheese, or potatoes. And honestly, when I did have my birthday here, the people that worked there and the owners, they were just so welcoming and so friendly and they kind of like hung out with us during my birthday. And you can just tell they're just good people and they've definitely like made an effort to make it feel like a much more local chill spot. Now, firstly, the design of the Pixel 7a is very familiar for the Pixel lineup these days with that purposeful camera bar on the back. We have four colors to choose from, charcoal, snow, sea, and the Google Store exclusive color, coral. Now, honestly, I prefer the brightest colors possible for my tech, so I would probably go with either the sea or the coral. But if you really want to stand out, that coral is very bright. I kind of love it. Now, being the more affordable A-series, as mentioned, the phone does kind of cut some features to save on price over the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro. Now, in terms of design, that means larger bezels and a plastic back. Honestly, though, unless you were tapping on the back of the phones like you were looking for a stud in a wall, you'd have a hard time noticing there was any difference, really. We do, however, have our metallic camera bar instead of the plastic one on the 6A, and I have to say that definitely makes it feel more premium than its predecessor. Now, the screen is a 6.1-inch OLED display compared to the bit brighter and more contrasty AMOLED displays of the 7 and 7 Pro, but if you turn it on in the settings, because it's off by default, it'll do 90 hertz, or refresh the image on the display 90 times a second to make animations and scrolling seem smoother than they did on the 60 hertz 6A screen, but they won't look as smooth as the 120 hertz display of the 7 Pro, but that 90 hertz does match the Pixel 7. Truthfully though, Google has said the screen is 25% brighter than last year, and I can say that I can see it in direct sunlight, and that's all I really care about. And in my opinion, I think you'll probably notice a bigger difference between 60 and 90 hertz than you will between 90 and 120 usually, so it's nice to see that here. Now, because of those bezels, the phone with that 6.1 inch display feels about the same as the 7 with its 6.3 inch display, and a good chunk smaller and lighter than the 7 Pro with its 6.7 inch display. Now the phone is IP67 rated, just like the 6A was, so it'll survive a drop down to one meter of water for up to 30 minutes, compared to the IP68 rating of the 7 and 7 Pro, but that just means 1.5 meters for 30 minutes instead. But since most of us will probably drop it in something much shallower than that and rush to get it back much faster than that, probably won't make much of a difference to you. But water resistance of any tune is welcome. Lastly, the fingerprint sensor is under the display again, and again, it isn't the best at recognizing my finger, but it isn't horrible. And and you at least do have the option of using the face unlock in conjunction with it now. And so most of the time, one will work well enough to make unlocking pretty soon. I've been meaning to come here for a while now, actually. This very distinct structure just off the coast of Manhattan is appropriately called Little Island. It opened in May of 2021 and is a public park that while being a man-made structure, was meant to bring a little nature to the otherwise very industrial piers here on the Hudson 
River. It actually came about because the original pier here, Pier 54, was damaged pretty badly by Hurricane Sandy. And so, in 2013, thanks to a donation from the Diller von Furstenberg Family Foundation, which is the philanthropic foundation of Barry Diller, the media mogul, and Diane von Furstenberg, the fashion designer, who I actually only know because of her special T-Mobile sidekick back in the day. And you remember that? Good times. Sidekick was a great film. Anyway, along with them and the Hudson River Park Trust, the concept of Little Island was proposed. Construction didn't begin until April 2018, and it was finally completed three years later. Maritime nerds might have heard of Pier 54 that was here before here, because it was the place that in 1912, when the RMS Titanic sank after hitting an iceberg and news reached New York City, its intended destination, the RMS Carpathia went out to retrieve and bring back the survivors. Back then, it was one of the world's busiest seaports with a huge building. The remains of the frame of the gates to that building still remain as the entrance to the park, and the wooden beams that you see to the left of Little Island are the remains of the original Pier 54. And this seems like a good place to talk about the main attraction of Pixel phones in the first place, the traditionally excellent software-enhanced cameras. This year, we actually have a new camera for the main one that is a much higher 64 megapixels compared to last year's 12.2, and is even higher resolution than the 50 megapixel ones on the 7 and the 7 Pro. A few things, though. The focal length of the sensor is 26 millimeter equivalent versus the 25 of the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro, and the 27 millimeter of the Pixel 6a, which means it's a hair wider than the 6a, but a hair less wide compared to the 7 and 7 Pro. Also, the size of the sensor and also the size of the pixels is smaller than the 7 and 7 Pro. We have a 1 by 1.73 inch sensor with 0.8 micron size pixels that could bend in sets of 4 to get a 16 megapixel image with 1.61 micron size pixels, compared to the 7 and 7 Pro's 1 by 1.31 inch sensor with 1.2 micron sized pixels quad bend again to get a 12.5 megapixel image with 2.4 micron sized pixels when we're done. All of that to say that the 7 and the 7 Pro will be able to gather more light per pixel, which theoretically would make them better in low light. For video, you'll see this more than for photos, most likely, as if the light is dim enough, night mode will just sit longer to grab more light to compensate for that, and the resulting images are still basically as good. Now overall though, even shooting in a dimly lit situation like a concert recently, the images are still just as good as you expect from a pixel with the phone basically editing the photos as you take them based on Google's own database of computational photography. Even the videos, I have to say, pleasantly surprised me in a lot of situations, even if they aren't quite on par with some other flagship phones. Now lastly, regarding that new sensor, that much higher resolution compared to last year's 6A means that the A series can now utilize the same sensor cropping that we had in the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 7 Pro to take a 16 megapixel section of the 64 megapixels to get a 2x zoom that is using actual pixels instead of a digital 2x zoom, which would use software to try and digitally recreate pixels so it results in a much better image than a digital crop. It does, however, mean that the pixels cannot be binned together in that mode to get those larger pixel sizes. So while the resolution is better, the light gathering ability is going to be less than that of having another sensor with larger pixels and a proper telephoto lens attached. Regardless, it's a good compromise to get a much better 2x than what we had last year, and it helps manufacturers keep costs down for the end product as well. Now, besides the main camera, we have a 13 megapixel, 120 degree field of view ultra wide camera with 1.12 micron sized pixels, compared to the 12 megapixel, 114 degree field of view with 1.25 micron sized pixels of the 6A and the 7. So it's not as wide, and again, with slightly smaller pixels, it won't gather light as well, but it just makes up for it in most situations with night mode lasting a couple of seconds longer. We also have a new selfie camera that is a 13 megapixel f2.2 20 millimeter field of view equivalent with 1.12 micron sized pixels compared to the 8 megapixel f2.0 24 millimeter equivalent with the same 1.12 micron sized pixels of the 6a and 10.8 megapixel f2.2 21 millimeter equivalent with 1.22 micron sized pixels of the Pixel 7. I do appreciate that it's wider than the 6a, and the way the end result looks in daylight versus low light is similar anyway, again, thanks to software carrying things, as is the usual on Pixel phones. By the way, something else very cool about this park is all the free events that happen here during the summer. Concerts in the amphitheater, music in parts of the park, family shows, etc. And every Wednesday, a small concert with quiet music to enjoy the sunset with.
Let's keep the maritime theme going, shall we? This is the Sherman Zwicker, a historic wooden schooner that now houses a popular oyster bar and restaurant called Grand Banks. The boat itself is a 142-foot repurposed fishing vessel that was built in 1942 and actually fished for cod mostly until 1968. After that, it became an educational vessel and was even docked at the Maine Maritime Museum for 20 years, teaching people all about the history of ocean fishing by sail. Now, the name Grand Banks most likely came from the designated international fishing region by that name, just off the coast of Newfoundland in Canada, where it is very likely this ship would have probably seen its cod fishing days. These days, however, it is docked here at Pier 25, which is a bit of a ways south of Pier 54 that we were just at, and, well, it doesn't leave here. And if you end up coming here on a bright, sunny summer day, usually you'll see a lot of pretty people eating oysters on it, obviously, and drinking rosé, also, obviously. And while it does get very busy when it's not raining, but there's obviously something to bobbing up and down on the water while eating, say, a lobster roll with awesome views. We have the same Tensor G2 processor in here as we do in the Pixel 7, which day to day, you won't notice a huge difference, but it combined with the 90 hertz display helps using a device feel a lot smoother, along with the normal pixel UI that's on here that's very minimalistic and just pretty snappy. Also, it does help with the battery life. This phone being the smallest in the lineup still does have a smaller battery. And as Pixel phones in general, while they have gotten better over the last couple of years, they're just still not the best with battery life in general. Especially if you use said party piece, the camera, it'll drain pretty quickly. Funny enough, the battery here is actually smaller than the 6As at 4,385 milliamps versus the 4410, but a hair larger than the 7, which had 4355. Regardless, we'll show some usage stats and talk about how it's performed throughout the day today by the end of this video, as usual. Now, something I do appreciate, though, is that they added wireless charging, which I personally like just because I have so many of them around my apartment and office, so it's just convenient to drop it down and it'll just do its thing. Now, keep in mind it's not very fast at all at 7.5 watts when you use a Qi wireless charger, but it's fine for using overnight or sitting at your desk for a long time. Now for the times that you do need faster charging, it does support 18 watts, which is by no means fast by today's standards, but it's very close to the Pixel 7's 20 watts at least. Okay, calling it a night. My battery died at about 7.30 p.m. And here is my screen on time and my usage for anyone who cares about that. Now, keep in mind, obviously this was not a normal day. I used my camera a ton. It was a real world test day. So take all of this with a grain of salt. With that in mind though, here is a much more normal day and the usage for that. So you at least have something to compare it to. All right, what about the Pixel 7a? Well, I kind of feel like Google's own products are its biggest competitors. We have the 6A that is still being sold new from Google alongside all of the Pixel 7 series, and that's now $349, although you can find even better deals on it, which I'll link below. But that is already down from the original price of $450. Now the new model, the Pixel 7a, is $500, so $50 more than the previous model when it launched. And I think that $50 is probably worth the upgrade as we have that better main camera, the better 2x option, nicer metal camera bar that I think helps it just look more premium, better battery life even if it's not still amazing, snappier performance if only just, etc. But at $150 difference, that's something more to think about. I personally would probably lean more to the 7A, and ultimately when the 6A stops being sold, then well, that option won't be there anymore. But also, the Pixel 7 needs to be considered at just $100 more. Now the benefit to that is bigger pixels, so better low light, faster night sight in those scenarios, but also slightly better 2X photos, since when it crops into the sensor, the original pixels are still larger, and we have a slightly larger screen as well, if that's your preference. But other than that, 
not a lot of huge differences. Now I will leave the best prices on all of the Pixel phones that I mentioned in the description below, and I will regularly update those as best as I can as per the usual, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Which between the Pixel 6a, the 7a, and the 7 would you choose? Let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Also, subscribe if you're not already, and ding the bell so you get notified when I do new videos. Um, also check out the rest of the Real World Test series. We explore a lot of places with a lot of different tech. So hope you enjoy that and my weird little format. As for me, it has been a long day of filming as per the usual. So, good night. Car, and another car, and another car. Ring. Now in terms of design, that means squeaky brakes. Get your brakes fixed. An inch display. Loud stompy child. Helicopters, so many helicopters. So many helicopters over the Hudson River.